You're listening to international investment advisor Doug Goldstein on the Goldstein on Gelt Show, the financial show where we'll talk about how you can make the most of your money. With all the confusing financial chatter bombarding you each and every day, Goldstein on Gelt will give you the practical information you want and need about living a financially stable life. Here's your host, money maven Doug Goldstein. Okay, we are back. We are talking to Fred Solomon. He is also a radio show host. His specialist is real estate. He's based in California. Fred, great to have you on the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Listen, three years ago, after the subprime mortgage crash, which was miserable not only in America, but also in much of the world, although not really in Israel, um, things look really bad. Do you think we're in a better position today? Well, you know, the U.S. government is doing everything they can to keep interest rates low. And the attitude, in my opinion, and I'm just one person here, but the attitude is is that in order to get us ourselves out of the mess that we're in right now as a country, basically it was the real estate crisis. And that started the snowball effect of everything else. High gas prices, inflation. Inflationary concerns, then we had deflationary concerns, which is what we had in the early 1980s with the Jimmy Carter era, which was inflation with high interest rates. So they were worried about that, and now they're not worried about that anymore because inflation is not a big problem. But what the problem is, is that they, they need to spur the economy. And the thing that caused this problem was the real estate market. The thing that's going to get us out of this problem is the real estate market. So what are they doing in order to do that? Well, they're artificially keeping interest rates low. The government is buying treasuries, and when they buy treasuries, the price of treasuries go up. When the price of treasuries go up, interest rates and yields on the 10-year treasury and all those yields come down. So they're everything they can in order to keep these rates as low as possible. And we are at historic record lows today. I mean, we're a quarter percent away from the lowest rates in history in America. Mm -hmm. And so because of all that, there it, it's spurring the buying activity and it's spurring refinancing. So those are the two things that are going to create more liquidity in the U.S. economy so people start buying product again, and we see gross domestic product and all that stuff start increasing again. So is now the time for people to refinance? Well, yeah, they can. <laughs> Finally, the U.S. government and Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which are the two lending institutions that are in charge of that, uh, along with FHA, but finally they got smart. And they started getting very strict. They should have been this way back in 2003 when real estate prices were increasing 30% a year. Mm -hmm. But yes, uh, for the ones that can qualify, it, it's a classic sign of the rich getting richer right now because the only people that can qualify for a refinance are people that have equity in their homes, people that have good credit, and people who make enough money and are not self-employed and they have a W-2 salary job or they take a salary from their corporation. Those are the only people that can qualify. Well, who are those people? Those are the wealthy people. Do they really need to save 100 bucks a month on their mortgage payment? Probably not. But will they? Sure. Absolutely they'll do it. And that's going to create more spending in the U.S. economy, which is the whole purpose of having lower rates. Nice. I got you. So there are a lot of different ways that people can buy real estate. You can buy a property. You can put more money into your own house. A lot of times people like to buy REITs, real estate investment trusts, which are the stocks that, that they, they trade on the stock exchange and they just contain a whole barrel full of real estate. Is there a preferred method for people who think the real estate market is going to go up? Well, you know, um, my father is a real estate investor since age 21. And he's one of those guys that can write a book on how to become a millionaire in real estate with having little to start off with. He, and, and so I look at people like my dad who've, who's gotten to where he is by being a smart man and by being conservative. And there are many, many different ways to own real estate. A REIT is the 
the the method where you have very little ownership headaches. You don't have to deal with tenants. You don't have to deal with leaky faucets. You don't have to deal with all that stuff. Um, but the real way to make money in real estate is what we call buy and hold. That's what people should have done uh, their whole entire lives. But there's other people out there that do fix and flip, and there's TV shows where you can watch how to do all that. But you got to buy it right, and you got to know what you're doing, and you got to know what the rehab costs are going to be, and you got to know what it's going to sell for after you fix it up. But yes, that's one of my passions is fixing and flipping and buying and holding. And uh, I own properties myself. And, you know, I, I'm always looking to increase my real estate portfolio. And one of the ways is by having positive cash flow and you know what the rents are and you got to know what the marketability of that unit is to get it rented and how fast it will rent up and what kind of area you're buying in. I hear. We are talking with Fred Fred Solomon, who is not only a, a radio show host on specializing in real estate, but also, in fact, does a huge amount of real estate work and education, which is one of the main reasons that we wanted to have Fred on the show with us here. Uh, one of the things that you teach about is what are called loan modifications. What does that mean? Well, you know, that business has really sizzled out. Um, I mean, everybody who is in the process of losing their home is getting notices and freaking out and, and, and there are opportunities for some of those people to do what's called a loan modification. And what a loan modification is, it's, a, it's the ability to renegotiate your loan with the lender. Now, Oftentimes, you're dealing with a lender who is just what we call a loan servicer because these are Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac loans, and you're talking to Bank of America, Chase, Wells Fargo, all these different lending institutions, and they're saying, you know, they're basically uh, moving you around like a little puppet on a string and playing with your emotions and doing everything they can to basically wear you down until you go away, mm -hmm. you know. Um, kind of like getting in the ring with a, a, a professional boxer, you're, you're, you're eventually going to get knocked out. Well, that's the goal of these banks, and that's the game that they play. So when you're trying to get a loan modification, sometimes the process can take one year. So they're not there to work yeah. with you. In other words, it's not like you go into your friendly banker and work out a solution. It's You have to go in and just hope that you're going to get something. Oh, uh, yeah, pray. <laughs> um, we Ford, go to a uh, temple, um, church. Is there, is there a specific prayer that you recommend for this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't, I, I don't have that answer, but um, I believe in karma. So uh, be good to people, and it will come back to you eventually. That's true. We do uh, talk about that a lot. Yeah. Unfortunately, the, these poor people that are involved with this situation don't have as much information that, as I do, and they don't know the way these loss mitigators think who are in charge of the loss mitigation department who deal with these loan modifications or short sales when people just give up and say, okay, I'm just going to sell my house, and they're selling it for less than what they owe on the property, which is uh, what we call a short sale here in America. So do you help and, people uh, deal with that problem? I mean, is that Do they bring in a yeah. guy like you to solve that? Well, there's tax consequences. There's uh, consequences of the banks coming after these people individually. Knowing how to protect yourself from that happening, I do have information on that. Um, I am a real estate broker, so I can help with people who are involved those, with those situations on how to protect yourself from the banks coming after you and from IRS problems tax-wise. So, yes, I, I am a good source for that. If someone does a short sale on his or lo is losing money on his house, are there does he also pay tax when that happens? Uh, well, there's a, a tax law that came out, and I can send anybody information on that. And basically, what the, if they're at the primary residence and it was within a certain time period, you will be able to eliminate those taxes. If you're insolvent, which means you spend more than you make or you have more debt than you do have assets, then 
those two things can also eliminate any tax liability. So there are a few things that you can do or that naturally happen because of your situation in order to eliminate any ramification from the IRS or any of the state governments coming after individuals on an individual basis. Wow. We are talking to Fred Solomon, who is a real expert in not only the real estate market in the U.S., but also dealing with the with the bad times that people have run upon, you know, have, have come upon that we've seen, hopefully none of our listeners, but very possibly yes. Um, and I bet people have called into you in, in your radio show. What was the best question you ever got on the show? Oh, wow. I, um, the best question was, huh, I wouldn't even know. How about the hardest but, one? Uh, uh, the uh, hardest ones are the tax types of questions where I had to, uh, while we were on break, I had to call my dad, and hopefully he wasn't on the golf course, <laughs> and I had to call up and I said, Dad, uh, can you tell me the answer to this question, because he's a CPA, uh -huh. so that's how I was able to help so many of my clients that were getting involved with, you know, they were losing their homes, and they said, Fred, please help me, you're the only guy I trust, uh, you know, I, I need some help, you know, and they're asking me questions I have no clue what the answers are but I have a dad who's smart who's involved with real estate and I was able to get some of those questions answered while on break so those were fun little times because we're getting back on the air and my dad's still rambling I'm like, okay dad I gotta go <laughs> <laughs> so great. yeah um, he, but my dad he's, he's been on my radio program many times who I, a man I have great respect for who knows the business so well and uh, gives me a lot of advice that I'm able to share with listeners. That's great. Well, I'll tell you, as, you, as you're speaking about him, just by, by way of disclosure, when I got into the business also, 20-something tw years ago, I was partners at the time with my mother, who had been a financial advisor with Dean Witter. She was a vice president there, and she and I were, in fact, partners on Wall Street before I moved to Israel. So I'm very familiar with what it's like to be in the same business with a parent. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's an honor that I get to continue the legacy, and, and thankfully, real estate's a second language to me, kind of like, you know, is uh, Hebrew is a second language to you. Sure. And 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 so I'm just thankful that I'm able to pass on information because it's all about helping people. And if you really care about helping people and you care about karma, then um, you know it all comes back to the the Oprah Winfrey philosophy: help enough people get what you want, you'll always have what you want. Mm -hmm. So. That's great. I, I was I was I was actually uh, questioning that philosophy during oh eight and oh nine when a company <laughs> was losing a hundred thousand dollars a month. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. uh, but now I'm uh, I'm you know doing well again with low rates. So I'm um, again very thankful and things work out if they're supposed to. That's great, Fred Solomon, who is from Solomon Financial. Just tell us how people can follow what you're doing, learn learn a little bit more. Yeah, we have a monthly email that we send out to people, and um, you can go to our website, no points with an S, no closing costs with an S dot com, and uh, we we give out great information on, on whether it's real estate, real estate finance, or real estate investment. I'm interested in all three of those areas, and that's what I've been doing since the day I graduated from college. Fabulous. Okay, thanks very much for joining us, Fred Solomon from Solomon Financial and from the Solomon Free Money Hour Radio Show. Thanks a lot. It was a pleasure. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.